From the 10th Annual Buford International Film Festival, Scott Lansing and David Barnhart uh, are here to talk about the second of two documentaries. It's a feat, actually, to get two films in the same festival. Congratulations on that. Uh, did, you, did you have, would you throw like five of them in there or what? How did that happen? <laughs> I don't know. Ron just called us and said, we've never submitted two mm -hmm. before, but he said, uh, what did he say? Each have such heart that I had to put them in. Well, they so, do. We've talked about um, the first one, the tsunami film. We're going to talk about Lock in a Box, which is something that uh, is timely, really timely. Uh, and I, I think it took uh, it, it, the audience kind of by surprise. Uh, and it's, it's basically about uh, the incarceration of, of uh, folks for no, no real reason, other than they're not citizens of the United States and for a profit. Yeah, and for a profit. I, it's one of those projects that we kind of we were surprised too. I mean, we thought we knew what was going on with immigration detention, mm -hmm. and with each interview, it kind of added another layer of, of um, you know, the, uh, on the system that's just brutally like dehumanizing mm -hmm. people. And that's what each interview kind of took us further and further into it. And we would look at each other sometimes after the interview, and be like, "Oh my gosh, did you know that the quota? There's a thirty-four thousand bed quota, and they're making one hundred and sixty dollars per person per day um, tax dollars." Um, to detain people for profit. Um, so one figure you threw, you threw up one one individual had been in for four years. Four years at, at a cost of about a quarter of a, a million dollars. And then they're deported. And so it's and at a cost of taxpayers. The cost of taxpayers yes, to exactly. you and me. Yeah. Right, right. And so what you have to think about is you know what what is a what is a detention center going to do? Are they going to release them? No, they're going to detain them because they can make money. It's a it's a two point four billion dollar industry, so. which is why it's not changing. That's right, because there's a profit motive involved. That's right. how, did you, how did you go about getting involved in this, in this project? It was presented to us mm -hmm. from different nonprofit organizations that are working in immigration detention. The Presbyterian Church, the Lutheran Immigration Refugee Services came to us and said, we want to do something on immigration detention. Um, can you write a proposal? And they knew how we approach these projects anyway, that we had seen previous work that we'd done. So we wrote a treatment and um, started doing the interviews and letting the interviews kind of guide us into it. Was it, what was it, I'm just curious, what was the initial cut that you had to uh, act down on that? How, how long did it come in? It's a, you know, it's a, it's a very, it's a very big issue and I mm -hmm. think it's, uh, it's trying to find the narrative. It's a very challenging narrative mm -hmm. uh, because we, we focus specifically on, um, there was a visitation aspect uh, uh, where visitors uh, go to see um, detainees and the effects of that. Um, there's a political aspect of it of, and then there's, there's a motivational, financial motivational. So trying to find that narrative weaved in together was definitely challenging. Um, and then, um, you know, we chose to, to use different, um, use after effects and, and certain things to explain maps and how, uh, where detention centers were and, and how to, uh, you know, just to develop that story. So we're trying to use all different kind of levels. I, I think Dave had the, this great idea of like traveling across uh, it, about the distances, mm -hmm. and so we really made an effort um, to shoot photography uh, in space in those places where uh, people um, are moving at night and during the day uh, uh, to get um, to get freedom. And so you said earlier you kind of discovered a wasteland uh, that you didn't know existed. Yeah, yeah there's um, there's a space I, I think south um, in Arizona mm -hmm. about a hundred miles, uh, which um, feels uh, like the Wild West, yep. um, and, and there's a lot of motivations in that area. Um, and it's been militarized. It's been militarized zone, um, and there's people that own that, that area, open on that land, that are um, responsive to the military. They don't like their, their uh, presence there. Um, and then there is, um, this is a very hot, challenging place. We had uh, 6,000 people in this area died or have died um, in one year just transferring, trying to get into the United States. Um, the Border Patrol sits off about 100 miles, so, um, which there's this buffer of danger that sits there, and there's a lot of motivations in there from animals, cartels, um, Border and Patrol, locals. and locals. And very, locals. Very, very interesting little scene yeah. where you know the, the guys who go out, the volunteers who go out and place water jugs along the trail, and he picks up one of his jugs and it's been punctured over and over and over and yeah. over again. Yeah, uh, somebody did this in anger. Yeah, um, this is a very heated political issue, and I think what we tried to do was get to the humanity that's at the center of this, that's being brutally <laughs> uh, dehumanized by this process. And then yeah. we tried to, to show that and lift that up, to say, yes, we can talk about the politics, but there's there's people, there's families, there's children, there's 
you know, fathers and mothers that are being impacted by this. It is a domino system. Yeah, it's very complex. Thank you very much. The film is locked in a box. Get more at BufordFilmFestival.com and LowCountryWeekly.com.